Hi, everyone. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight on a Tuesday evening with me. Um, I am super excited to be back at UCI and uh, share how to best rock your LinkedIn profile and utilize the platform. Um, so a little bit about myself, as Joy mentioned. My name is Christine, and I graduated from UCI in 2010. Um, I was involved with a few different organizations, like the Career Center. Um, I was in a Panhellenic Pan um, Association and ASUCI, where I planned events um, for students on campus. And I'm currently at LinkedIn. I've been at LinkedIn for coming five and a half years now. Um, I've had four different roles at LinkedIn. Uh, I started in recruiting, so uh, feel free to talk to me after, even though I'm no longer in recruiting, always recruiting. Um, and I moved into events uh, manager role, and then now currently a project manager for um, one of a really large uh, key organi uh, engineering organization at LinkedIn, um, where I do uh, strategic initiatives and uh, operational projects and programs for um, our engineering team, making sure that um, our organization is running effect effectively and efficiently. Um, and then before we dive in, just quick logistics that I'm supposed to share is that uh, I was able to get some free three months LinkedIn um, premium codes. So you probably received raffle tickets. And if you haven't, you should definitely grab one um, because we'll be raffling two off at the end of the night. And then um, we'll be doing another one where if you share on LinkedIn about something you've learned or something um, you want to share about this event and hashtag uh, adulting for anteaters, We'll pick someone from there and also the survey that will be sent out after this event as well. So before we dive into um, about LinkedIn, I wanted to quickly cover what we're going to talk about today, what to expect in this workshop. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about LinkedIn, getting to know about LinkedIn, um, about your professional brand, your professional story, um, build thought leadership on LinkedIn, and gain knowledge and insight. And afterwards, we'll go into Q&A. So LinkedIn is about you. Um, it's your professional community and um, a way for you to help, um, a way for you to connect to opportunity on LinkedIn. Um, it is, this is a great example I like to use um, about donuts, um, but donuts on other social media versus donuts on LinkedIn is very different. As you can see, um, you know, Facebook is I like donuts. Snapchat is watch me eat a donut. Uh, Instagram, here's a cool photo of my donut. Pinterest, here's a donut recipe. Spotify, I'm listening to donuts. And um, on WhatsApp, anyone want a donut? Uh, versus LinkedIn, it's kind of different. It's more of your professional, uh, even though it's donuts. You know, hopefully one day I can operate a donut franchise. That would be great. Unlimited donuts for life. I'm looking for a job at a donut company. I have three years of experience um, making donuts. Uh, my top skills are donut production and sales. And um, here are my three recommendations from former colleagues um, that I worked with at the donut shop. So that kind of differentiates the social versus the professional, professional life. Oh, actually, before I get into more details about our company, uh, who here has a LinkedIn profile? Awesome. I think majority of you have one. If you don't, hopefully you'll get one by tonight. Um, I know some Carlos had promised me he's going to get one. So I'm excited to connect with you on LinkedIn after this. Yep. And so um, we define our vision as our true north at LinkedIn. It's our dream as a company. Um, it's what drives us at LinkedIn every day. And it's to create economic opportunity for every member of the global workforce. That's what we're trying to do. And uh, followed by that is our mission, which um, is our overarching objective. And it's to create the world's professionals to make them more uh, productive and successful. And everything we do is geared towards that. For example, um, a few years ago, we, we acquired lynda.com, and now it's known as LinkedIn Learning. And we noticed that there's so many different opportunities on LinkedIn, there's so many different jobs, but not everyone has the right skills for those jobs. So there's a gap there. So um, we acquired Lynda as a way to bridge that gap, where you can learn on the platform and um, utilize what you've learned to get closer to your dream job and to be more productive and successful. 
So LinkedIn is a very powerful tool. Um, there's so much data on there. Like you and I are putting information about ourselves, you know, where we work at, what we do. Um, it's super powerful to help you connect to opportunity. Um, we have over 590 million members, um, over 30 million companies, over um, 20 million jobs, over 50,000 skills, and over um, 84,000 uh, schools on LinkedIn. So some examples, I was just, just reminded earlier talking to someone here that um, you can use LinkedIn for so many different things. Like, whether it's to find a job, whether it's to learn about something, like someone has a role that you're interested in and you want more information, there's so many people you can tap to. Some random examples that I recently had was I was trying to go to um, the Magic Castle in LA. It's like very exclusive. And I was like, I don't know anybody, but I wonder if I could find someone on LinkedIn that can get me there. I searched magician, Magic Castle and pops up actors and different one, people who worked at a magic castle. I looked at somebody who we had mutual connections with, reached out using our LinkedIn messaging tool, and just pinged him saying that like we had some connections, I want to go visit, how can I do that? And he got back to me immediately with like a code. He's like, give me your email, um, I can definitely get you in. And then a week later, I went to the magic castle. So. It's random connections like that. That's just one fun example that I've experienced, but um, the power of LinkedIn is it, it's incredible. So um, who here has a LinkedIn profile photo? O almost everybody, but by the end of the tonight, you will have one. Um, also, sorry, I just realized my slides swapped. But um, LinkedIn profile is your digital portfolio. Um, it's what represents you and tells your professional story. So think of it less of, I would think of it less of a resume and more of a dynamic portfolio where you can put um, engaging visuals um, and different things that will enhance um, your profile. So when people go to that, they see like, this is who you are, this is a di digital representation of you, uh, not just a resume. Um, and that's why your professional branding is super important. And so we're going to do a quick activity. Uh, please find a partner in your table or close to you and brainstorm uh, three words that your friends would describe you. So go ahead. We'll probably take like a minute. Introduce yourselves because you probably don't know everybody in this room. <laughs> Let's wrap up. Um, does anyone want to share what their three words or their partner's three words are? Anybody want to volunteer? Awesome. I would say that about you. I actually know Tanya, so that's cool. Thank you for sharing that. What about your partners? Does she have one? <laughs> My positive, friendly, and organized. Awesome. Cool. So those are great words to describe uh, yourselves and what you want to know to be professionally. That kind of shows like your authentic self. Um, so cool. Thanks for sharing that. And I asked earlier about the profile photo because um, if you have a LinkedIn profile photo, you are nine times more likely to get a connection request, 20 more times likely to get a profile view, and 36 times more likely to get a message. So um, I know some of you guys took new LinkedIn profile photos today, but if you didn't get a chance to, no worries, because our awesome photographer in the back will continue taking more after the session. So you'll get your chance to get the one that you actually like. Um, and again, it doesn't have to be a perfect photo. Um, you could take it with your, uh, with your iPhone, your Android, uh, whatever phone you have, as long as it's high res, you know, has good lighting, and really represents who you are and what you want to show your professional network. And also, we have uh, a new photo filter, so you can uh, further enhance uh, your LinkedIn profile photo. Um, after that, update your industry. Uh, members with industry information gets uh, received nine times more likely to get viewed, and also more than 3,000 people search by industry on LinkedIn every week. So you have a better chance of getting found uh, if you add the industry that you're in. Summary. 
So think of summary as your elevator pitch. You want to focus on your accomplishments um, as well as your aspirations. And it shouldn't be too long because you'll be sharing a lot more information um, in the next section, which is the experience part. Um, but you want to highlight some of your, um, you know, your key accomplishments that you want to put out there. And if you um, have 40 words or more, you're more likely to be viewed um, and shown up on a future employee search. So definitely have um, a compelling summary. And then uh, details of your work experience. So that's next. Experience is your opportunity uh, where you can tell your professional story um, and talk about, highlight even further the accomplishments that you've done in each of the roles that you've had. And I know that some of you are students and may not have like, work experience, but um, your, your school experiences also are is very valuable. Uh, for example, when I was a student and before I started working, I put on uh, my LinkedIn profile, I was a peer consultant at the Career Center um, where I help students like with their resumes and career advice. And then uh, when I was planning events for ASUCI, I was able to highlight the relevant experience I've had to get my other jobs. Um, so definitely whatever experience you have is gonna be good experience and make sure to write that so we know. Like I looked at some other people's profiles already. It's great that you have the title, but putting in what you do shows me as like a recruiter um, you know, what, what did you do in that job? Like, that helps me know who you are and what you're capable of doing. And then add examples of your work. So this could be like rich media. It could be videos, presentations, um, it could be photos. Uh, it just enhances your LinkedIn profiles and shows like what have you worked on. It's easy to engage and interact with like videos and, and visuals. Um, and this, this doesn't have to be content that you own. It could actually be from like a, your work, your school, and highlighting that like this is where I work at. This is what uh, our company does. This is what my school does. Um, so those are totally fine to use. Uh, and slide transition. Volunteer experience. Volunteer experience is also really important. And actually, almost half of hiring managers view volunteer experience as just important as formal work experience. Um, so again, if you don't have work experience, you could definitely add in volunteer experience as well. And make sure you add you know, one or two sentences about the organization and what you actually do for that specific organization. So now that you all will have a rock and LinkedIn profile based on those couple steps, we're going to go into a little deeper into how to build thought leadership and having a voice on LinkedIn. So now that you have this awesome LinkedIn profile, um, you know, it's a place, LinkedIn is a place for you to share your insights, your expertise um, uh, to your professional community. So here are two uh, ways for you to share to your professional network. You can share um, updates and publishing posts. So as I mentioned earlier, for one of our raffles, we'll be doing um, a sharing updates uh, raffle where, again, share something that you learned today and hashtag uh, adulting for anteaters and we'll pick someone out of that. So that's an example. It's like quick links, articles, images, something you just want to, you think your followers would be interested in. Um, that is what an update is. While as publishing, um, it's more of a long form post and it's um, usually about something, a specific topic you want to dive deeper into. So this is how you share a status update if you haven't before. You can just go on your homepage um, and update it through there. It's really easy. Um, some best practices for sharing updates is share your authentic voice. Be authentic. You know, LinkedIn is a platform where your voice can be heard um, to your professional community. So, you know, stay on brand, be authentic. It keeps it more interesting. Um, post frequently. The more you post, the more likely you and your content will be seen um, on LinkedIn. Start a conversation and share your point of view. Uh, include rich, rich media to increase engagement. As mentioned earlier, um, when you share rich media like videos and, um, and photos, um, they're more likely to get comments and likes. So it's definitely the, the more engaging you can get, the more people engage with your conversation, and the more I'll be seen. So publishing on LinkedIn is, as I mentioned, a longer form blog post. Um, it becomes part of your profile, so it stays on your profile. <laughs> It gets shared to your network and reaches a large group, like the largest group of professionals on LinkedIn. 
Um, so you can you have access to 590 million plus members on LinkedIn that has potential to see what you're talking about and for you to share your insights and knowledge. So this is how you um, publish on uh, on LinkedIn. It's also really easy when you go to the um, homepage section. And best practices on publishing. Uh, create a headline that captures your attention. So if you're super busy, what would capture your attention? Like what would make you like stop and read someone's blog post, right? So think about that. Um, include a photo to stand out. Uh, our, a, a post that have like a cover photo and photos throughout, um, people definitely engage better with those, uh, those types of posts. So we recommend including photos. Again, be authentic. Like again, LinkedIn is a place for you to share your insights, your thoughts with your community and so be yourself. Uh, think about your audience and who you're connected to. What do you want to share with them? What do you think they'll be interested in engaging? And the article link to, um, that does matter, uh, even though it's a longer form blog post, we still recommend, like the sweet spot is between 600 to 1,000 words. And you can track your progress on LinkedIn. So that's what's awesome about it. You can see how people are engaging. Um, you can see the analytics um, of status and how people are engaging with your post. So now that you have rocked your LinkedIn profile, shared content, um, next is to gain knowledge and insights on LinkedIn. So you can do that by following companies. Uh, stay connected to companies that you are most interested in. Uh, you can follow um, them at the company page and they will share like the most up-to-date product launches, what's happening recently with their company, and it's extremely important for you if you're interested in working for that company. Um, it's it shows that you've done your research when you go into the interview being like, oh, I just saw that you had this new product launch. It's, it shows that you've done your research and you're really interested in working for them. So this is a great way to gain knowledge about the companies that you're interested in. And also uh, follow influencers um, so that you can stay up to date with trends and topics about people that you admire and inspire to be. Um, if they're you know, influence that, that you want to learn more about, you, once you follow them, you'll be able to see what they're doing on LinkedIn, um, how they're engaging with activities across LinkedIn. Um, LinkedIn also has advanced searches to help you find what matters most to you. So you can easily find a person, jobs, companies, and learn more about them. You can even um, you know, find by location. There's a lot of different uh, customizable things that you can do on LinkedIn. Um, one thing to add is also there is like alumni tool. So if you go to like UC Irvine, as we all are at UC Irvine, um, you can go to UCI and see who the alumni are. Where do they live? Where do they work at? What do they do? And what year they graduated? So you can narrow down to search on, say you're looking for someone who works at LinkedIn and graduated 2010. I will probably come up on that search, right? Um, so Another thing about networking is also utilize your, your connection. So as you're building this awesome LinkedIn profile and creating awesome content, you also want to make sure that like, you have a community of people who will engage with your content. So start connecting with people that you feel that, um, you know, start with like your friends and families, right? Your coworkers, your colleagues, um, your classmates. Um, those are people, a great way to get started first. I even encourage you all to connect with each other um, because like building that network, the more people engage, the more people you know. And again, right, it's not about who you know, it's who knows you and who they know and also who knows, um, this is so common now, so who knows <laughs> you and who they know and what they know about you and what you aspire to be. Um, so a good example for me is that like when I got my current role, uh, it was through someone who I've worked with, my current boss is someone that I encountered with a few years ago on this event that I did, and she knew that I was interested in project management. I had no background in project management, like nothing at all, um, but she knew that about me and knew that I was capable of doing it, uh, seeing, like, seeing how I work in other roles. So again, about who knows you and your work is super important as well. Um, so these are things that you can build upon in addition to your LinkedIn profile is through that. 
Um, and talking back about like the alumni tools and stuff like that, when you uh, connect with people you don't know, um, you want to introduce yourself, you know, sh let people know who you are and a little about yourself and also what exactly are you looking for when you're reaching out to that person. Uh, people are busy, but they're more than likely willing to help, especially if you're connected in some way or another. See if you have mutual connections. Maybe your connection can introduce you to somebody else. Um, and at you know, UCI, it's like, oh, I'm an alumni, and you go to UCI. You know, I'm more inclined to want to help you because we're all ant eaters here, right? Um, and like randomly, example, Jermaine last week, I met him in our San Francisco office. He had reached out to me a couple weeks before, um, mentioned that he is like a senior at UCI and he's part of the LinkedIn events. Uh, he plans LinkedIn um, local events and uh, was planning to come to uh, San Francisco head or headquarter in San Francisco or headquarters not in San Francisco, but come to our San Francisco office and uh, wanted to meet up before he comes to this session uh, tonight. And so he utilized LinkedIn to reach out to me. And as an alumni and like the person that loves working at LinkedIn, and I was at work that day, so I met up with him at the event, and we ended up bonding over like hours of board games afterwards. So it's really, it's a kind of like bringing the online presence and even connecting offline. So those are some tips that I wanted to share with you, because um, I find that really valuable and things that, if you're doing that already, great. If you're not, I highly encourage it, whether or not you're in school or recent graduate, um, these are all things that you should continue to be thinking about and doing going forward because it would definitely help with your professional brand and sharing your professional story and continue building that professional uh, presence. So with that said, does anyone have any questions? Oh. What is your name? Ali. Ali? Okay, nice and there are so many times that you go to your LinkedIn profile and you might see, for example, you're, you're, you've appeared in, I don't know, for example, 98 searches this week. And these are, your, these are the keywords that the people who have searched, and these are the people mostly from these in industries. Um, of course, from the keywords, we can find out that, okay, what part of our profile is getting the attention. But let's say, for example, how can we use it when we see, for example, a company is searching for, a, I don't know, for employees, and they have open opportunities, and you just appear on the searches, but you don't get any invitation. So, I don't know, can we use this data, or um, how to use it? And also, another question is that, uh, so, uh, we want to make connections, so there are so many people that they want to connect to us, we might accept them, or we might not, because some people say that if, if you accept the people, who are even familiar, but they are not relevant to your industry, it might affect a bit negative. I mean, it might affect, it might, it might not have a good effect on you, because for example, when someone is searching for you, they might see the people you may know, and they see that, okay, the, when they just uh, search for your profile, and they're, they, they're looking at the profile, the people you may know, they're not so relevant. Does it have an effect? And the most important thing is how to connect with the recruiters and the people that we want to connect and help send invitations that there are more I mean, likely to do. Okay, there are a couple questions in there. The one I remember first was, um, so you mentioned, like, I think it was your second question, of um, like connecting with some people like you would accept and not accept because you're worried about like how the no, search. I've just, I've just heard that. I heard that, for example, if you accept the people who are not relevant to, to your industry and making your connections bigger and bigger, does it have a good effect or not? Uh, you could definitely connect with multiple people who are not in your industry. It does that doesn't really affect like how people can search for you. Um, as long as you put your industry, that's how it starts. So if, as a recruiter, if I search for industry and you show up, let's just say I'm looking for internet, and you're in an internet industry, and along with other keywords, I can find you. It it doesn't affect if you're connected with someone in fashion industry. I'll still be able to find you because you have put for your profile. That's what you know. That's what you're in. That's your industry that you're in. So um, you can definitely connect with other people. Um, it's just like the people you connect with are people you want to like. You're going to be able to see their their feed, their content, right, and engage with them. So you want a, a network of variety of people that you're interested in tech, you're interested in fashion, like you're interested in different people. Um, so I would follow the people who 
you are most interested in. Um, in terms of like connections, I feel that like if you feel that you have worked with each other in a certain capacity, those are always great um, to connect with. They'll have something to say about you know whether they work with your school or somewhere else. And family members can speak on your behalf of your personal, like who are you as a person, and that goes towards with like your professional brand as well. Um, so that's it's not a bad thing to connect with, starting with your your family and friends as well. Um, so as long as again it's a professional setting, and if you feel like they can be professional with you, um, then that's totally fine. And then your other question was about recruit, how to connect with recruiters. So that you want to send connections. So of course, when you want to send connections, you have to send a message, for example. Mm -hmm. I mean, people say it's more effective. So, I mean, what's the procedure? Uh, so for so you were specifically specific about recruiting or recruiters. Yeah, let's say let's say for example, because most of the people who are who make profiles on the LinkedIn, they're mostly looking for job opportunities, or they want, to, for example, hire someone. Mm -hmm. So on the I mean, on our side, since we are in university and we're students. Most of us, they are, we are searching for the job opportunities and we want to just yep. guarantee something. Okay, so um, for recruiters, actually, they're most likely to connect with you because their job is to recruit for talent. So you'll see that a lot of times, like recruiters that don't know you will request to connect with you because they want to recruit you. Um, and so, and honestly, recruiters are really open to uh, to accepting most, uh, if you send a message to them, to say, hey, like, my name is, so my name is Ali, um, and I saw this job posting that you put on, I'm really interested in that, this is my background, why I think that, um, you know, I, why I think I'm a fit, and even if not, for future opportunities. You never want to, like, burn any bridges either, um, because you never know where the other person will end up, or another job that you want to have. Um, so if you send a message like that, like a personalized message, then they're more than likely to accept. Uh, generally for me, I do see a lot of messages. So when you uh, personalize it, that's when it will make me feel more likely to engage back. Like maybe going to their LinkedIn profile. Like I noticed in your profile, you said you like to hang out with your Pomeranian. That's in my LinkedIn profile. It's okay to put that. It's something that shows like who I am outside of work, right? So if you put something like that, I know that you took the time to look at my LinkedIn profile and send me a message. So I'm more likely to write back, take my time and write back to you because I see that you have spent some time to actually do some research about me versus doing like a very, a set like, hey, I'm doing like a very generic uh, message that could work. But for me, like for me personally, I don't really respond to those because I feel there's, there's so many of those. And I really want to help the people who really want, who really want it, and are you know really looking for something, and actually put some effort and thought into their messaging. Yeah. Good questions. questions. Hi. Hi. Okay. What is your name? Suda. Suda. Yeah. Cool. Um, I do have two questions. I'll let you know that up front. Okay. So, <laughs> first question might be a little bit of um, Ali's question, which is. I guess related to connecting with people, um, sometimes um, I'm, I'm newly moved to Irvine, so sometimes I do get connections from people I don't know, mm -hmm. um, and sometimes I try to connect with people I don't know. What is your recommendation on best practice about reaching out to people? Because um, sometimes there are people in my profile that I have never seen. I don't know if I'm ever going to see them again. Mm -hmm. So it, you know, how do I keep that um, productive for me? Mm -hmm. uh, leading on from that is, I guess the question is about, because LinkedIn is a lot about professional connections, um, one of the big things that I um, am interested in is how do I convert that connection that I make with someone online into an offline scenario? Mm -hmm. Like, What is a recommendation or best practice that you have um, that you would recommend? Uh, the last question that I have is actually about a feature that I noticed um, on LinkedIn recently, which is offer uh, mentorship mm -hmm. or, um, you know, get career advice or you know some sort of advice and I connected with someone who's a student um, but I was like okay you know um, I've kind of answered a bunch of questions this is my areas that I think I you know can offer some assistance in but you know how does that you know how does that feature work you know how do you make that better um, for myself you know if I'm sorry am I making sense yes okay, great. I'm just um, trying to remember <laughs> no go on so how do I basically I guess um, maximize the use of that tool? okay so the three questions. <laughs> <I can laughs> the, questions the sorry. I can repeat my question. Okay. Yeah. So the last one, um, 
like if you as a as a member and as a user of LinkedIn, it's so great that you are uh, you know opening yourself up to be a mentor and help somebody else. And it is supposed to be you. It is new a feature, and so we would love your feedback. So if you have feedback of how you feel like it would make make more sense, or for you to feel that this is um, even more useful, provide that feedback. Like you can tell me. We can pass it to the product teams. Um, they talk to our members, so they talk to members and figure out like what ways do people use these types of different, there's so many types of um, tools on LinkedIn. How, how do we make it the most useful for our members, right? So uh, if you have suggestions, feel free to reach out even on LinkedIn. Like, and I can even tell you like who, the, we'll look, find out who is the product person. We can you know, reach out to them um, and, and let them know that these are things that you're looking for. Yeah, but it's so great that you are doing that. Um, so awesome. And then you mentioned, what was the other? So the first one was, uh, what is the best practice for adding people and connecting to people who are not, like if you don't have mutual connections mm -hmm. or, you know, and sometimes you get advice from people that, I, I don't know, maybe they just randomly click yeah. me or, you know, how does that algorithm work maybe? Mm -hmm. um, and then a lead on question is, how do I make for it to be a productive professional relationship? Offline. What is, yeah. Okay. Okay, so uh, I would say that, if again, like I was mentioning earlier to Ollie, um, that when you connect with people that you don't know that you want to connect with, personal, personalize your message. Like you said, you just moved to Irvine. You could say like, use that like, I'm new to Irvine. I see that you're in Irvine doing this and this, that I'm interested in learning more. Like, would you be open to talking to me? You know, would you like to, you know, meet for coffee? Like, I'm willing to like buy you coffee. Like usually like, if you show that like you you know, you're, you're really engaged, you want this to happen, you're kind of offering something, but also showing like, what, what can you offer as well, right? You're looking for advice, you're looking for something, what can you also give back? Um, so that's something that could help with, you know, getting that a connection. I mean, the, the, the best way is, of course, if you have a mutual connection, um, because they can introduce you, but if you don't, maybe see like, look at their profiles. Maybe what are they involved in? Maybe they like, basketball and you do too and you can really be like oh i saw that like you're a basketball player and so do i like kind of just sh seeing what things you have in common when people notice like commonalities like they're more likely again to be like oh yeah you know they like to they like meet people who are like oh similar in some way like like oh we share common interest and um, there's something we can talk about or you're really passionate about like nonprofits, and i am too then it's like i see that you've read my profile and i'm more likely again to respond to you because you've actually done some homework. And then taking things offline, again, it depends on you know where you're located. Um, if it's within locally, uh, I think that's, you can start off, again, asking if they wanna get coffee or tea. Um, again, like uh, the example with Jer Jermaine, like I met him online technically, um, and then we met in person, and now like I'm meeting him again today. Um, and like for me, I feel already a connection there that if he comes back to San Francisco, I'd be happy to meet him again. So it's kind of like you build off on that uh, and, and just continuing that kind of relationship. But you can definitely bring the online presence um, to real life. It just depends on you, the other person, and um, you know what exactly it is that you're trying to do. Uh, but that can definitely happen, and I've just experienced this last week. So uh, hopefully that could also work. That will be able to happen for you too. Um, but I think that's a good way to be personalized, invite them um, to talk about something that they're passionate about also, right? And then you're more likely to get a response from them. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, over, over here. Oh, we can start with you in the front. Okay. Uh, my name is Gio. Uh, so the question that I have is, I've had LinkedIn for quite some time now. Um, and as I've gone into postgraduate, so there's different like stages of my life essentially. Is there like a best practice for as far as maintenance? It's like certain things that should start to fall off and certain things that should stay on just so that it's not like this long, mm -hmm. it's kind of like, straight to the point. Is there like a best practice for that? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, generally, so like when you're in college, right, you don't have a lot of, um, you don't have a lot of work experience. You put a lot of your relevant school activity experiences on there like I did. Um, once I got like my, first job, I'm like, okay, I, I still actually left some of the things from school because it's recent. Um, so I would say like um, in the early, 
earlier on, maybe within like the first five years, that's fine. As you get more and more like, uh, now I don't have like, I don't, put the, I don't put that I was at the career center or that I was in ASDCI, but I moved that to the bottom where um, under like my education, I put like the organizations that I'm involved with, right? So I still have that there because to me, it's important, but it's not like the most important or the most relevant to what I'm doing now. So you wanna put, like if, if what you're doing is relevant, then you can leave that on. But if it's not as relevant anymore to where you're trying to go into, what industry you're trying to do, and the work you're doing, then you can slowly drop that off. If you already have a ton of like great information on there, you wanna put your most recent and most relevant information uh, of what you want on your LinkedIn profile. So whichever ones that you have that's most relevant, I would keep that there. Does that answer your question? Yeah, and then the second question, or the second part of it was, how important are the testimonials? Oh, the recommendations? Yeah. Okay, uh, recommendations are important. Um, it would be, it's great if you can get it. I know, you know, you have to like ask someone for it and make sure they really know your work so that they're comfortable like writing something for you. Um, so, but I think it's super important because it's, it shows that not only you're saying this, it's like, I can say like, oh, I'm amazing. I do this and that, but you know, I can just make it up. Like they, who, who knows if I'm actually great at my job or not. Um, but when there's someone that, for example, if I ask my boss to write a recommendation on me, for, uh, for me on LinkedIn, it kind of shows that like my boss agrees that I'm, I did a um, really great job while I was working there. Um, it just gives that like an extra confirmation, uh, extra like reference check kind of that you are awesome and people enjoy working with you and they second what you're doing. So I, I know that not everyone has it, but it's I definitely recommend reaching out to some people in your network, um, people you've worked in the past, maybe even like call um, like your coworkers that you worked on projects with. Um, that stuff's totally fine as long as they can speak on your behalf um, about about anything like you've done professionally. That's you can ask those people, and I think that that would be very valuable. Yeah. Uh, the back. Um, hi, Christine. My name is Connie. Uh, hi, Thank you so much for coming out today. Um, I noticed on your LinkedIn profile that you mentioned some volunteer experiences like Tech Women and uh, Make a Wish America. Um, so, what is your recommendation in terms of using the volunteer experience either for new students or for like new grad students, people who are mid career? So, if you could kind of give your thoughts on that. Uh, so, so your question was, uh, so based on my, my uh, so thanks for reading my profile. <laughs> um, and so your question was about uh, how, so um, I saw that you've um, listed a couple of volunteer things that you have worked on. So what's your recommendations for other people in terms of using that feature if it's something that students or new grads should use to perform their career? Um, if we could talk about some of the benefits that you like in that. Yeah. So as mentioned, like um, when you're in school, sometimes you don't have work experience. And as I mentioned that, actually a lot of hiring managers take a volunteer experience as just as important as your formal work experience. So if you don't have like formal work experience, if you volunteer, those are definitely, you learn a lot through volunteering. Um, and so those experiences are super valuable. And for you, like, because I have like work experience, so those are like a top of my profile. Um, but if you don't have that work experience, putting your volunteering experience at top, it shows that like when I look at your profile, that even though you don't have work experience, your volunteer experience is like work experience because you're working for an organization, you're doing things for them like you're working for them, right? It's just you're not really necessarily getting paid for them, but it doesn't discredit that you are doing something very valuable and that you can bring something to the table in this other job. So definitely, again, like highlight what the organization is and um, and share one or two sentences at least about what you're doing for that organization. That is super valuable. Yeah. Uh -huh. Else, uh, have questions? Okay. My name is Guillermo. And, Hi, Guillermo. Uh, my question is: I know knows on LinkedIn there's a premium option. Uh -huh. uh, what is or give give a little bit of information on what that is? Or how does that help you get more? Yeah. Or? Great question, because we are raffling off um, <laughs> premium, some uh, a couple of free three-month premium accounts. Um, and actually, you could, uh, 
most people should be able to test it out for a month as well. Um, but, but some features are like um, who viewed my profile. So if you have premium, you're able to see who has viewed your profile, right? So it, it's useful when like if a recruiter from say you're interested in working at LinkedIn, you can see like a recruiter from LinkedIn viewed your profile and like, oh cool, they were kind of interested. Maybe they didn't um, message you yet, but you can see like who, like what kind of people you are attracting in terms of like maybe the content you put, um, the things that you are, um, you the things that you're publishing or your profile has those keywords that people are looking at your profiles. Um, so that's one. And then also on their salary insight. So you're able to see kind of like, I want to do, I want to be a software engineer in San Francisco. Around how much do you, you know, what is like around the, how much would I be making? What should I be asking for? What am I valued at, right? So that's really useful tools. Um, and also there is, uh, um, you, can send, you can send messages to people you're not connected with. Um, so right now you have to connect with people to send messages because we want people to like to actually spam, you know, other people. So with this, you have these in-mail credits that you get every month and you're able to um, message people that are outside of your network. And also you get access to uh, LinkedIn Learning, which I mentioned earlier, uh, it used to be lynda.com. Um, so that's where you can learn different skills. Uh, so you want to, we even have like classes on like, uh, I think DJing. So if you want to learn how to DJ, you can go out in there and learn how to use it um, and take a class, take classes on that. So those are some things that would be very valuable. So a, a five of you will win um, premium career uh, codes. So, okay, question. Is the learning platform free, or is it when you're a premium? You get it when you're a premium. Yeah. Um, I remember this earlier. My name is Charlie. Charlie. Uh, so I just have a question in terms of the industry. Would it be uh, relevant to what we've already done in terms of what the experience we want to experience, or is it what we aspire to be? Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I would say it could be both, but really, so when you're looking for putting industry, if that's something like you want to move forward to, then it helps me see if that like, you know, when, when I'm doing searches that you would pop up in those types of industries. And that way, um, even if you're maybe not currently doing it, I can see that like you want to be and then look at your relevant experience that even though you're not in that industry, you've done relevant things that could still work in this industry. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, back there. So I noticed. Uh, what is your name? Oh, I'm sorry. My name is Alex. Alex. And I noticed that well, you can add skills to your profile, right? Things that you're proficient in doing. I noticed that um, when you search for skills, it will automatically add that skill to like a certain subcategory, like it'll say like tools, or it'll say like skills, or something. Like that. But then it'll just have this kind of catch-all section that says other. So where does that actually get established? Like who establishes what skill falls into what category? Because I noticed that I can't actually like move it to a certain place. It just kind of moves <coughs> it for me. Okay. Wait, so so you're saying that you can't categorize your your skills. So <coughs> so for example, like if I wanted to put uh, like C plus plus as a skill that would go under like tools and mm -hmm. whatever. If I put um, I don't know, software engineering as another skill. It would fall under like general skills, but then there were like some more, I guess, uh, lesser known uh, aspects to that that would just go into this sort of other skills category. Mm -hmm. um, I was just curious if that's decided by like LinkedIn or if somebody, I don't know, some user created <coughs> that and like put like a tag on it or something. Yeah, um, I think that we can check with the product team. I think the product, like they generally do, they figure that out based on like, yeah, but we could take a look at that and see. I can check later for your profile and see uh, exactly what you're looking for and see if that's is just a function that we need to fix or something, we can check that out. Yeah, but s skills is another thing that it's also important because that will show up in keyword search. And especially I think you should have at least five skills and then you're more likely to get popped up in um, keyword searches. So get those and then get people to endorse you for the right skills. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, Jermaine. I guess this is more of a question slash request, but could you discuss the pioneer by teacher for connections? 
Oh, yes, I can definitely do that. So um, we have this new tool, new-ish tool that we created at LinkedIn, which is nearby. So if everyone can pull up your phone and if you go to the, the people to people, there's like a two person um, icon on LinkedIn. So yeah, so go to your phone, go to LinkedIn, if you have the LinkedIn mobile app, and um, in this icon, the second one, on the very top, you'll see find nearby. Tap that. I think you need to have good internet though, let's see. Do you guys see people popping up? I'm not getting anything on mine. <laughs> Hold on, let's see. Let me make sure I have mine turned on. So, Bluetooth, LinkedIn. So do you guys see everybody it's like popping up? So here's your start. This, I'm sure everyone here are brilliant individuals. You guys go to UCI, so you guys are smart ant eaters. This room has great people that you could connect with, like people in your tables, people that you can network with afterwards. You know, again, it's your, your connection, your network is super important, and there's like hundred of awesome people you can connect with here. Um, so mine's not working for some reason, but Jermaine, is it working for you? Okay, cool. So this is super easy for you to find people nearby. If you're on this, everyone, you can start like connecting with people here. Um, and also an easy way to connect, I don't have business cards anymore because when people ask me for their business, my business card, I say just connect with me on LinkedIn, it's easy. So you can easily, you have a QR code. On the very top, there's like a QR code thing. And then um, this is my code. If you wanna connect with me, you can just literally scan it and then my face will pop up and you can connect. It's just so easy now to connect with people. So there's really not an excuse to like, oh, I lost your business card or something like that um, because you literally have your connection and your network in the palm of your hands right now, like through LinkedIn. So um, those are some features that you can use that will help you um, speed up your connections and like events like this, easily connect with everybody that you meet. So have fun with that. Great question. Thanks for sharing with that, uh, that feature with you. Any other questions? Okay, right there. Uh, my, I'm Mohammed, and my question is about ProFinder. So I use ProFinder myself a lot. Mm -hmm. And let's say I want to try to seek help from someone who can help me with my resume. Uh, I ask for help and I get some proposals. And, uh, but for whatever reason, I don't want to continue with, with those uh, coaches. Um, what is the best way to find some other people with new proposals? Because um, when I try to do that again, I'll, I'll receive the same proposals from the same people. Mm -hmm. Even when I choose, I, I don't care about the, the location. So. Well, Sapan, I'm here so I can help you with your uh your resume LinkedIn profile today. So, um, but yeah, Provider is a great tool for different things like that. Uh, I haven't really had to use it that much, but I know people have found like their accountants, like different types of people um, through Pro ProFinder. Um, I'll have to double check on that. Like if you're able to get a refresh, I'm not sure why you're not seeing any uh, new sources, but we can check on that. In the meantime, I'm happy. I'll be I'll be sticking around here afterwards. So if you guys have more questions, feel free to come talk to me. Um, and I'm happy to take a look at your profile. And I know some of you guys brought your laptops here, so um, we do have some time. Uh, so if you want, I'm happy to do some personal, like small group, one-on-one -on -one settings um, to go over any other questions that you have. Yeah. I have a small question. Uh, what's the, I mean, the premium feature email, the email. <coughs> when you send someone message using email, do they get the email I mean, in their mailbox link to the LinkedIn, or they have to connect to, uh, they have to sign into LinkedIn to see the message? Uh, it's so important. Most of the people may not come to the LinkedIn, mm -hmm. but when you send an email message, and if they see it in their email, they might get the message. Yeah. So, uh, if they're linked, yeah, they're, um, they'll get it in their email as well because it's connected to LinkedIn. Yeah, they, they should be receiving the messages, so you should be good. Yeah. 
of air. Um, I am so cheap. I had a question regarding why is it um, when you have an active job, the profile you use go up higher than when you're not working? Because I was recently um, laid off, mm -hmm. but I noticed that when I put an end date on my current position, my profile would just like, drop dramatically. Hmm. That's interesting. Um, okay, we're going to take a look at that. Um, that shouldn't really be the case necessarily, but again, now that you know there's so many other ways to get your profiles to be seen, so like engaging in posts, right? Honestly, like recently I've been seeing even like utilizing LinkedIn. I I'm sorry to hear that you got um, let go right from your job, but LinkedIn is literally the perfect platform to find like your next job, right? So I've actually seen people who post really great content on there after being like laid off from their jobs. And so many people reach out to them, like, send me your resume, send me your, um, send me your information, like, we wanna talk to you. Uh, I've seen it like go viral because people are so willing to help and reshare it to their networks. And if you put yourself out there, like you're looking for something and share it in a compelling way, like people would definitely want to help. Um, so I think that would also contribute to getting your profiles viewed more, you know, and connect with like um, connect with different like recruiters, um, follow the companies, and talk to people who are in the companies you want to work with. Um, those are ways to help you get to that next part. Um, but in terms of the profile views, I'm not sure why we can check on that as well. Um, but I think that now you know how to like spike that up. So hopefully you'll be able to utilize some of the things you learned today and get your profile views up because there's so many different ways to, to do that yeah let's help you find your uh, next job uh anybody else i think we are um we only have a couple minutes and i know we have uh the raffle of the free linkedin premium um so we'll be doing two raffles here tonight and then one will pick uh they'll pick tomorrow night uh after you guys Post something about the event tonight with the hashtag uh, adulting for ant eaters and we'll pick someone tomorrow night and then also um, they'll pick someone from or two people from doing the survey so uh, that kind of wraps up the, the night uh, thank you all again for spending this Tuesday night with me and listening on LinkedIn you guys are awesome you're already one step further because you are eager to learn about how to build your professional brand so you're already one step ahead of everybody else who's not here tonight. So good job. And um, let's, shall we do the raffle? Really quickly, can we give a, a round of applause to Christine? She actually flew all the way here earlier.